Money, money, money. It makes the world go around. I think of money and imagine an Italian mafia boss trying to extract some money out of his clientele. And you might think of money and think of this or this. But have you ever thought about why these things became money? I mean, why paper and why gold in particular? Why isn't our money made out of wood or stone? Or better yet, something like rice. Rice is a useful material. It's plentiful, weighable, scoops nicely, and can be used to eat. Why didn't something useful like rice become money, whereas rather useless gold did? Well, before we get into the reasoning, we have to ask ourselves why we need money in the first place. Money does some things really well. Before money, we had to barter with people. Could you imagine the fights caused by bartering and not knowing what was worth what? If I was trading a pig for some wood, how much pig is worth exactly what wood? And if you have a hundred different things in your economy, there are 4,950 different exchange rates you need to be aware of at a time. All of these exchange rates could fluctuate depending on the supply or the demand of your goods and each of those processes are extremely chaotic and OMG, there are just so many exchange values. This is where money comes in. Money allows you to compare each of the goods to the value of money, cutting it down to only a hundred different exchange rates. This lets you compare prices easily between goods, even though on a direct level, you'll actually be using two exchanges rather than one. Money also lets you do something fairly well. It lets you store value. Keep that in mind as that is an important thing about it. Storing value. But can't rice store value too? Surely it does have value and can be stored, but money stores value in a way that is easy and costless. Rice is not really easy to store, where are you going to put 2 tons of rice? And rice goes bad after a while, so it is not costless. There's a maximum time you can leave it out before it goes moldy. So the lower the storage cost, which might not be a real cost, but the ability just to store it easier, means that that particular good is more likely to become money. If we were just using this factor, why didn't something like rocks become money? Rocks are easily stored and never go bad. Well, there's another part to it. In order to become money, the good needs to be scarce and rare, but not too rare. So to be a candidate for proper moneyhood, you need to be both low in storage costs and rare. So what did early humans choose to become money in a bartering economy? Money was not an explicit invention. Nobody woke up one day and said, I have this great idea for money. It slowly developed over time and became a part of human life and culture in a very similar way to how language was never invented on purpose. To start off with the history of money, first let me tell you about the two different kinds of money. There is commodity money, things with an actual use to them like cigarettes in a prison economy that can be traded as money or smoked, and the second type is fiat money, a type of money with no real value, like paper money, it can't really be used for anything other than trading. The first money might have been some used during bartering. Some ancient people in places like China, India, and Africa used cowrie shells or beads to barter. They weren't widely accepted as a standard money, but since they were used to barter with, the person accepting them must have believed that they could use it to trade as well. These shells and beads are not too too rare, but they are at a low cost to store, so they are a fine candidate for the storage times rarity theory. If we scoot over to ancient Mesopotamia, we can find that the first instances of writing recorded were actually accounting spreadsheets. One thing is important on these records though. Since they are just numbers and tallies, it probably assumes that whatever was used to buy the good was of an equal value to itself. What? What does that even mean? It means that whatever was used as money was worth the same amount to everyone, aka it was fungible, whereas these shells were non-fungible, NFSs. These shells could have been different values to different people, but this Mesopotamia money was of an equal value to all other versions of itself, and the money they chose was the shekel, although it was used as a unit of weight rather than explicitly as money. Still, they were the first instance of equality in money. Then, in ancient Egypt, Babylon, India, China, and Turkey, they all started using coins. Interesting how these areas thousands of kilometers apart all adopted metal coins as a form of their money. Or is it? Metal is almost the perfect candidate for our storage times rarity cost. Metal is extremely storable, especially in these small coin forms. 
and some metals are also fairly rare, making them a great option. They used bronze, particularly the Romans, silver and gold in different areas. The only problem is whenever a new supply of metal is found, it causes a short run economic boom and then long run inflation and puts the whole rarity score out of whack. To solve this, many areas like Greece and ancient Turkey started minting their coins. By putting a face or horse or whatever on the coin, you can roughly control how much of your good is in the money supply and artificially control its rarity score. Or, if you didn't have the material anywhere near you, you couldn't create that supply. For instance, Sweden used copper plates in this early modern era since it never had gold or silver. So maybe it's only the storage cost that counts now. Metals were still used until pretty recently and have been debated countless times throughout history, sometimes with bloody results. For instance, the United States was on the gold standard until 1971, and we still use coins today as a form of holdable money. For the most part though, we've moved on to paper money. Paper money is cool and all, but it came with a downside. Unlike coins which carried their value on them, usually had pieces of paper which you needed to trust the bank to hold the gold for you to use. For the most part, paper money worked on a metal standard, usually gold or silver or a mix of both, but more recently the money is standalone by itself. Paper has little intrinsic value, at least compared to metals. Metals could be turned into weapons, tools, jewelry, electronics, and more, but paper? Well, I guess you can write on it. So when you've already written on it, designating it as money, it loses its main value. This makes paper the first real fiat money. Money just for the point of being money. Paper's storage cost is way, way lower than metals. You can carry way more bills than you can coins because they are so thin. But paper is less rare than metals, coming from trees after all. This shouldn't be a threat if you use either the gold standard or a central bank to mint your currency, tying the rarity to gold or to be artificially set by the bank. The practice of paper money likely started in the 11th century in the Song Dynasty China. It was really just a fancy version of an IOU, or a receipt that you owned the specific metal in the bank somewhere. Later, it was introduced to Europe after Marco Polo discovered it, and it was introduced to the rest of the world by Europe after the continent conquered the entire globe. You could also say that credit and checks and savings accounts and loans were invented in the Middle East during the Islamic Golden Age, but that's not what this video is about. The rest of the story is history. Metals and papers were used as money throughout the entire world now, either on the gold or silver standard or standalone currencies. Until it wasn't history anymore, and the fancy new shiny internet came along and disrupted everything. Now we can keep our money in banks and access it digitally. Imagine that there is no practical storage cost and the rarity is still tied to what's inside of the bank. If you need to buy something, you'll likely just use digital debit or credit nowadays. It's absolutely crazy. This is also where other forms of currency, cryptocurrencies, come in. They have the same storage costs, nothing, but are much rarer than something like dollars making them worth much more. Currently they're still rather fringe but are growing in popularity, and all money needs to be to become commonplace is for it to be widely accepted. And now we're really at the modern day. This whole video was to say why gold became money and rice did not. When we're looking at storage costs, gold is so much easier to store than rice is. It doesn't go bad and can be manipulated into small pieces. Rice already comes in tiny pieces making it hard to work with. The general trend in history has been storage costs of money falling dramatically nowadays to practically nothing. The second part is rarity. Rice is just way more common than gold. You can grow rice out of nothing, but you must find gold. Our rarity scores have been becoming more and more controlled by central authorities throughout history to control the money supply and protect the values of our currencies. Money today is artificial, both through fiat money and setting the money supply, but I think that's a good thing. It makes money and the value of money more predictable and stable. Ancient civilizations did not have that luxury and had to pick their own money, choosing metal over rice. For these reasons, I think it's why you would rather grab a bowl full of golden jewelry than a bowl full of rice.